Good morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. And uh, we are uh, 10.30, jumping online for our service this morning. And uh, if you're jumping on, already on, waiting, we're going to take a few minutes and uh, let others catch up and get online with us. And uh, good to uh, connect with you today. And um, it's um, raining, it's freezing raining here at our home. And uh, so uh, we are um, hunkered in uh, at least for the next couple hours till the temperature comes up. And uh, hey, we got four jumping on, others are, are joining us. And uh, I can just say as we're waiting, uh, just disappointed about not being able to be again together today. Uh, of course, last week, a lot of folks sick, and I'll update you on some folks this morning uh, as well. But um, last week, according, uh, including our family, uh, Melody and I especially, still getting over being sick and was really looking forward to today. Spent a lot of hours up at the church Friday and Saturday uh, getting things ready and uh, then to miss out today, uh, which is sad. But um, we are able and thankful to join online and uh, i've got all these computers out in front of me down where you can't see them uh, with my notes and things and uh, to share with you today and we're going to pick up from where we left off last week uh, on endings and new beginnings part two and uh, as you can see uh, i've got my um, chosen uh, hoodie on uh, and uh, we're in our connect groups going to be finishing out the chosen part one uh, next sunday night so hopefully everyone's getting well enough to gather in group life. And then on the 23rd, uh, we're all going to meet at the church. All the groups are going to meet at the church on the 23rd to have a recap of season one and then launch out into season two uh, for this winter break, uh, winter season uh, in group life. And so um, look forward to hoping you can connect and get involved uh, in that as well. But um Hey, uh, more people are jumping on, and uh, so I just want to update you on some some uh, prayer requests. Um, we have uh, three of our deacons right now uh, are sick, and uh, so pray for uh, the freezes. Pray for Vicky and John. Um, uh, pray for uh, Joe and Rahima. Uh, they all uh, got sick, and so remember them, uh, if you would. And then last night got uh, some information um jim espenshade was um taken to the er last night and uh being sick so pray for him um and then tom uh kaczynski as well and donna pray for them tom uh is in the hospital as well and so just remember those folks uh and uh, encourage reach out uh, to reba reach out to our families either text message email somehow just to uh, encourage them and uh and I know uh, people have reached out to us and our sickness, and I try to connect with some folks uh, via text as well. I know it's hard to talk when you're sick over the phone, so text message is a great way uh, to just reach out, let people know, send a card <clears throat> as well. So uh, continue to pray for those folks, uh, if you would, and, uh, and lift them up. Maybe there's some others as well that uh, I'm not aware of yet. If you can just uh, text or uh, email Vicki and let Vicki know and we'll get those out. Uh, also, um, keep praying for the Tullocks and uh, also keep praying, if you would, for Ivan and Jenny. Uh, they've been <clears throat> under the weather as well. The Troutmans as well uh, are others who have been sick. And uh, so I'm sure I'll forget somebody, but uh, there are so many that uh, over this Christmas break uh, really uh, got hit hard with the uh, different symptoms and flu-like symptoms and, and different things. So uh, just lift each other up if you would uh, this morning. Hey, we're about almost five minutes in, and I think uh, we've got those that were able to jump on. Hey, if you do this right now, if you would just uh, share and like uh, this this morning, and when we're done, uh, again, Mary Ann will put it on uh, YouTube. And so those who don't have Facebook and have YouTube access, let them know that it's on, and she gets that right on right after we're done here uh, this morning. And then after we're done, you can take the video uh, and share that with others and uh, let them know we were live today and, uh, and they can be caught up on the message. And then uh, also just some uh, taking some clean cleaning house with announcements. Um, we were supposed to uh, have a meeting today about our annual meeting 
Uh, so we're going to push that back again. And uh, so next Sunday, uh, barring any situation, I may just have church anyway, I don't know. But um, barring all that, we will have uh, our uh, meeting uh, to discuss any questions you may have about the, the budget and things. And then on the 23rd, we'll vote uh, for new leadership. Uh, we have that list ready uh, and also for the budget. And then I'll be addressing the church uh, on the 23rd about some uh, things to be praying about. We were also supposed to start our 21 days or 40 days of fasting and prayer tomorrow. Uh, you're welcome to do that. And uh, if you want to push that off a week, uh, back that up a week, we'll all start together on the 17th. Uh, feel free to do that as well, whatever you feel like the Lord wants you to do. And we'll talk about more of that on Sunday also. Uh, I really like for us to be together with that. And so, um, so please help us with that. Hey, take your Bibles and turn to Joshua, Deuteronomy 34 and Joshua 1. And uh, so uh, I know last week uh, Brad uh, Morris mentioned that our my volume was kind of low. Maybe it was my voice. I'm going to try to talk a little louder today. And, uh, and also we're going to work on uh, getting some kind of external mic and some things um, uh, technology-wise that if we need to do this, um, we have that available uh, to do. So uh, get your Bible, get a pen. Uh, get your cup of coffee. Uh, this is a great time to have that next to you as well. And we're going to look at part two <clears throat> of endings and new beginnings. Deuteronomy 34, Joshua 1. Uh, last week, um, we launched into this. It's really just a two-part series I wanted to use to kick off the year. Uh, have the, the, the first part the last Sunday of December and then the second part the first Sunday of January. But that didn't work out, and the Lord's just kind of blown up all of our plans for this beginning of the year. And that's okay. We will just take what we can get uh, right now. But uh, we talked about last week. Uh, we, we really focused on endings last week. I have one more point to share today about endings. And then my final point today will be talking about new beginnings. And uh, just to, by way of review, uh, we said last week, uh, you only grow. Uh, this was a quote by John Irving. He says, you only grow by coming to the end of something and by beginning something else. And uh, and we really challenged you last week to think about and uh, throughout this week, uh, what endings, uh, what is God coming and bringing to an end in your life uh, this year, 2022, and what new things may the Lord be introducing or bringing uh, into your life this year? And, uh, and so we asked you really to consider those things. Uh, throughout this week. And um, and as we talked about endings, the reason we don't like endings, we re the reason we don't like things to come to an end that we are comfortable with or that we, um, uh, is because we just don't like change. Uh, change is a challenge. And uh, you probably should write that down. Change for all of us is a challenge uh, because we just don't like getting out of our comfortableness, our routines, our uh, the way we're just accustomed to doing things in um, in our lives, and so we like we like what is comfortable. We like what is easy. We like the rhythms that we have built in our life. What's coming? What's going? And um, and so God, however, brings endings into our life because um, th some things have to die for a new growth to take place. And so we talked about that last week. And some of the reasons we avoid uh, endings is we see endings as failures. And that if something has to stop or something changes, uh, it's we, we see it as a failure uh, on our part or maybe on its part. And uh, so we want to avoid failures. We hate feeling like a failure. And because of that, we avoid uh, endings at all costs. And um, the second reason why we avoid endings is we see endings as disconnected from our spiritual growth or spiritual formation. And uh, the way that we look at, at the ending of something um, needs to be fixed. And uh, endings are for our spiritual growth and uh, they're necessary. Um, I had a preacher friend of mine years ago said this, that everything in life has shelf life. And uh, just like at grocery stores, you know, when something's a hot seller, it's right in the middle of the, of the shelving. And if it's a new product, they put it at the top. When it's a product that's going out and they want to get rid of it, they put it at the bottom and, uh, and eventually take it off completely. And because everything has shelf life and in our lives, God has shelf life with things 
that uh, he moves around at times and then eventually he takes it out because he wants to put something new in because of our need to grow, our need to move forward in our spiritual journey uh, with him. And the third thing as we review about endings, uh, we never see our struggle with endings as being connected with our origins. And uh, and we that means our families of origin, our churches of origin. Uh, we are all raised in different family background dynamics. We are all raised in different church maybe dynamics. And, uh, and we just were not taught or discipled is the word that we need to use. Uh, we were not discipled very well about endings in life and changes in life and doing different in life and doing different in church and doing different in our spiritual walks. Uh, we just weren't discipled. Uh, we, we had this mentality uh, brought to us for a lot of years in church environment uh, that, you know, uh, we used cliches out of the Bible. Uh, I'm the Lord, I change not. That means nothing ever changes. And that's not true. And uh, just like we've been reading in The Chosen, Jesus came and he said, get used to different. Uh, he brought different. He brought change. He brought endings to some things and new beginnings uh, to others. And uh, and we got to realize the impact of our families of origin, our churches of origin on how we view uh, endings and new beginnings. And, uh, and so... Um, that being said, uh, we, we brought ourselves to our sermon uh, in a sentence, and, uh, and we said last week, and it's the same as this week, that in the pain and confusion of endings uh, in our lives, uh, we must learn to embrace God's gift of endings and new beginnings. Uh, change is painful. Let's just be honest. Uh, change is confusing. Endings are confusing. Death is confusing. And uh, when it happens, when it takes place, sometimes it's planned, sometimes it's, it's, it's instant and uncertain uh, in its, when it comes into our lives or the loss of a job or the, uh, the loss of our health. Uh, you know, those, those types of things are confusing and they're painful. And, um, but in the midst of all that, we need to recognize that this is a gift. And we're going to talk about that at the end of the message today, that these are gifts from God to you and to me to help us in our spiritual formation and our spiritual growth and where God wants to lead us in 2022. And uh, so, <clears throat> so we talked about, number one, how do we do that? Uh, how do we embrace this gift that uh, God is bringing to me in 2022 and to our church in 2022? We said, number one, uh, we, we can embrace this by accepting that the Lord is the one who orchestrates endings with an eternal purpose. And, uh, and we saw that in Deuteronomy 34 uh, with Moses. There was a, uh, the Lord orchestrated this whole ending of Moses' journey and life and ministry and service for him. And, uh, and he initiated that. Uh, he communicated that uh, to Moses. And, uh, and we see God working. Um, and we have to accept that, that this is something that God brings in uh, change into our life and brings change into our church. And brings change in our Christian life. And, um, and so today I want to jump into number two. I don't want to rehearse the whole message from last week, but I want to jump into number two and uh, about endings. And uh, so we have to embrace uh, the gift uh, that God brings, and, uh, and we have to learn to accept that he's the one orchestrating it. Number two, uh, we need to see that we need to learn. So we not only do we need to accept that God is working in endings, we need to learn that the Lord's endings reveal truth, reveal the truth about us and about God. Uh, they, we need to learn that. It reveals. Uh, look at Joshua, if you would, and uh, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Uh, very interesting verses here. Um, in Joshua 1, it says, after, <coughs> excuse me, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, Here's what he said. Here's what the Lord said to Joshua. Verse 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, into the land that I am giving to them, to the people of Israel. Now, notice after the death of Moses, verse 1, the greatest leader in Israel's history uh, to this point and even after he's considered the greatest leader of Israel and uh, and after he's died in chapter 34, uh, the Lord came to Joshua and hears the 
in totality what he said about Moses and the leadership that Moses gave her 40 years. Notice what he said. Moses, my servant is dead. That was it. And uh, a friend of mine, pastor in New York, Rich Velotis, said this about this verse in verses one and two. He said, this might be the most humbling Bible verse in all of scripture. If there was ever a passage that communicated our dispensability, it's this one. Moses was the greatest leader in the history of Israel, and God just keeps things moving. God is the one, the only one, that is indispensable. And, uh, and here we see in verse 2, the totality of what God had to say about Moses is, hey, Joshua, he's dead. He's dispensable. He was here, and now he's gone. And now I got something for you to do. Uh, it's time to move on. And uh, what is God doing here? And what is God revealing to us in this uh, in this passage to Joshua and this in this this message to Joshua and, and to us is that we have to learn that uh, the Lord's endings reveal truth, the truth about us and the truth about God and uh, God's plans and God's purposes, God's mission and God's message do not depend or hinge on one particular person with notoriety or popularity, with giftedness or ability. It's not about being old. It's not about being young. It's not about the last generation. It's not about this generation. It's not about the next generation. The Lord said to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. Let's keep moving. Let's keep going forward. I brought an ending. Moses is dead. And now, Joshua, it's time for a new beginning. Let's keep moving forward. I've got a plan. I've got a mission. I've got a purpose for my people, and it's to keep moving forward, not to get stuck. Now, if you go back to Deuteronomy 34, you'll find that they mourned for Moses for 30 days, and they took time to embrace the grief. They took time to embrace the loss, but too many times we get stuck at an ending. We get stuck emotionally. We get stuck mentally. We get stuck spiritually uh, because at the the, uh, the enormous uh, things wrapped around these endings in our lives, and we get stuck there. But they, God clearly came to Joshua and said, listen, I understand he's gone, but it's time to keep moving forward. There's still a plan and a purpose I have uh, for your life. So what does this reveal to us, uh, This this re this what the Lord's saying here? What is this revealing to you and I that we need to learn? Well, here's a couple things I want to give to you uh, that we need to learn is that God has a unique timing and purpose for everyone. God has a unique timing and purpose for everyone. Uh, everything about our lives is given by God. T when we're born, when we die, uh, who we marry, uh, our, our, uh, our jobs, our status in life. And uh, yes, there's freedom to choose. Uh, our career paths, there's freedom God gives us uh, as we follow him. Uh, to Sometimes he gives us permission to make these uh, decisions in life. But the fact is, is that God is the one that uh, has unique timings for our lives and purposes for our lives. Uh, when you think about our birth in Jeremiah chapter 1, God uh, reveals to Jeremiah that he's the one that orchestrated the time of his birth and is coming to the earth. Uh, our purpose in life. God orchestrates our chief end is to glorify God with our lives. That's That comes from him, not from us. And um, our length of life, our days are numbered by the Lord. And so all these things uh, are uh, coming from God. And uh, at the time that Moses died in, in chapter 34, that was orchestrated by the Lord. He had a unique timing for Moses. And now Joshua, the new leader and the new group of the children of Israel after all those uh, below 20 had died and passed away those 40 years. Now this new group, God has a unique purpose and timing uh, for them. And uh, it's the Lord that provides where he sends us. Uh, it's the Lord who accomplishes what his purpose for us is in us. It is God who is working and willing. Ephesians tells us his good pleasure. Uh, you know, when you go back to James chapter 4, uh, in verse 14, James, the half-brother of Jesus, said our lives, when you look at our lives, they're like a vapor. And uh, they're short, 
Uh, they appear insignificant, uh, not much impact. Uh, when you look on this, the global scale of things, life is like a vapor here for a little time and then gone. And, uh, and that's all in the uniqueness of God's timing and purpose. So what does that say to us? Here's what it says is that God doesn't hinge. God doesn't put all of his eggs in one basket, in a sense, on one person. And uh, Moses, as significant and as a great leader and a, and a great uh, a representative of God, an advocate for God, uh, God shows us that uh, he uh, isn't depending on Moses to do it all or the way that Moses led and the way that God used Moses that he has a different plan and a different purpose for everyone. And so that is true for our lives as well. The plan for God and reaching the world, the plan for God for reaching Lancaster, the plan for God for reaching your family isn't dependent only on you. And uh, God has a plan for all of us. He has a plan for our church. And uh, our church has been around over 40 years and uh, with different pastors and different leaders. And some have come and some have gone. And uh, but God's purpose in that is unique to him and uh, the, the, the leaders of our nation. God raises up. The Bible tells us leaders and he takes down leaders. And uh, his plan is not dependent on one individual and one purpose. God is operating in his timing and in his purpose in your life. Uh, another uh, pastor friend influencer in my life. Uh, back in 2013, said this statement, and uh, I've used it many times, and it is so true. God is not in a hurry. God's not in a hurry, and uh, we're in a hurry. We're rushing all the time, and uh, we get caught up in this world's um, way of doing life, and it's rushing around. I catch myself all the time uh, driving down 30, uh, going here, going there, always in a rush, and, uh, but God doesn't work that way. God doesn't operate. God has a unique timing and purpose for every part of our life. And uh, he's not in a hurry. You know, we, we you know, have been promised 70 years, 80 if we're blessed. And, and uh, when the scope of life, that's really short. Moses was 120 when he died. Um, in the scope of eternity, that's a very, very small window. And in that small window of our lives, God brings in endings in his unique timing and new beginnings in his unique timing into our lives. We have to learn that these come from him and they reveal to us. What does this reveal? It reveals that we are dispensable. God one day will call us to the end of this life and then someone will raise up and take our place. And, uh, and the sooner that we embrace our dispensability, the quicker we'll learn that in this time that we have right now, we need to take advantage of it to be sensitive to follow what the Lord wants for our lives, what he wants for our church, what he wants for us individually, families, on and on, uh, jobs, uh, all kinds of areas of our lives. What does God want in this brief time that I have? And what does he need to end and what does he need to begin so I can grow? Uh, the second thing I want you to see is not only has God has a unique timing and purpose for all of us, but secondly, God, only God is indispensable. I mean, this is a huge, huge lesson that um, we need to learn, that only God is indispensable, meaning we are completely and totally dependent on him. Um, we're not God. And um, he doesn't depend on us for his plan to be accomplished. And uh, he told Joshua, Joshua, Moses is dead. It's your turn to step up and, uh, and let's keep moving forward. And uh, just as Moses, and he goes through the rest of Joshua 1, and he reminds him of what Moses did and how Moses trusted him. And Joshua, now it's your turn to trust me. I'm the same indispensable God that led you the 40 years, led Moses and the people of Israel 40 years. I'm the same God that's going to lead you into this new beginning. Uh, and we'll see this in just a moment as you cross another river, another moment in time that uh, that these folks had never faced before. Um, and so 
uh, to embrace endings and new beginnings, we have to see that we're just a small part of the Lord's greater plan. And uh, when you think about it, I mentioned this a minute ago, when you think about Moses, um, he is 120 years. That's it of the nation of Israel's history up to this point. Just 120. There's been thousands of years of Israel's history. Moses is only 120 years of it. And uh, he had a beginning. He had an ending. And uh, and there's an ending of Moses so, so that there could be a Joshua uh, as well. And so, um, and so uh, God had a next step plan uh, to lead the nation forward. And that next step plan was Joshua. And for Joshua to come to the forefront and to be that next step for God's plan for the people of Israel, Moses had to have an ending. And um, so I wonder this morning, how, how does seeing your indispensability or how, to, how does seeing your dis dispensability um, come to you? Uh, what, does that, what does that generate in you? What is that like for you? And um, what does that reveal to you? What should our attitude and spirit be knowing that God is preparing and bringing others behind us to keep his purpose and plan moving? You know, we think, uh, and, and I'm, you know, 47 and uh, but even now, I can see we think we're everything depends on us and we forget that God is continuing to bring people behind us to move things forward, to take God's next step uh, plan for uh, uh, the church. And uh, when you think about that, you know, it's not our job uh, as the church to keep things as they are uh, that are things that are non doctrinal, things that are non uh, biblical, things that are are are. are what we call means and methods. Uh, it's not our job to preserve them. It's our job to follow Jesus in the now. And as God brings up people behind us to lead beyond us, um, what is God going to have for them? When you think about this right here, what is Joshua and the nation of Israel about to do? God's about to take them across the Jordan River into a land that they've never been. Uh, and that really is what the generations now, the next generations, they're going to be approaching things they've never been there before. And God's got to raise up people and raise up leaders uh, to do that. And so what is our, what is the timing of God and our dispensability reveal to us? Does it cause anxiety? Does it cause frustration? Does it cause us to, to be uneasy? If that is, then we, we need to learn and we need to see that God, what, what is God's plan? What is God's purpose uh, for me in the right now? And, uh, and what is God bringing into my life as an ending so that I can see his new beginning? And thirdly, uh, how, do we, how do we embrace um, God's gift of endings and new beginnings? Lastly, um, embracing, embracing the Lord's new beginnings introduces God to us in a greater way. And uh, so this is the part we're talking about some new beginnings and not very much, uh, not very long, but um, think about these new beginnings. Um, it, it, these, these introduce God to us, reveals God to us uh, in a way that we maybe have not experienced him before. And um, so when you think about here in Joshua, we have a new leader and a new assignment. So for the last 40 years, They've been wandering in the wilderness. The assignment was Moses, because of their disobedience, because of their rebellion, you're going to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. That's the assignment. Moses, you're going to lead them in the wilderness for those 40 years. That was the assignment. That was the leader. Now here in Joshua, we have a new leader and a new assignment. And, uh, and God is going to begin to introduce himself to the leader, Joshua, and the people, those that were 19 years and younger back then, at that beginning of the 40 years, now they're grown and adults. He's going to begin to introduce himself uh, to them in a way that they have not seen God up to this point. And, uh, and that's what new beginnings are all about. It's us seeing God work in our lives in ways that we haven't seen him work up to this point. doesn't mean God is something new. It doesn't mean uh, there's... Uh, uh, that God is 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 different 
than what he's been in the past. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. But God is indispensable. God is omniscient. He's omnipotent. Um, the we, we, you know, we, we don't know everything about God. If we knew everything there was about God, then he would cease to be God. And uh, so what is God doing? God brings new beginnings. He brings changes into our life so that we can experience him and know him in a way that we've not known him up to this point. That's what Paul talks about in, in the book of Philippians, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So we can experience him. We can walk with him and learn about him uh, in ways that we haven't up uh, to this point. The people here in Joshua and um, uh, are about to experience some difficulties and challenges that they haven't had up to this point. And uh, the leader of Israel is now dead. They've been mourning. There's been no one like him before this. And uh, I'm sure they're thinking there's no one like him going to be after this. And now they're standing uh, at this point in front of a raging, flooding river that they have to cross over. Uh, Three million plus people have to cross over. And then once they cross over the river, they're going to face giants, an army of people and giants in the land. Uh, that want them dead. Uh, you, man, you talk about challenges. You talk about new. You talk about difficulties. Um, what, what, what are they going to do? How are they going to do this? And uh, so look, if you would, uh, at verse 3 of Joshua. And notice what God says. Here's the assignment. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you just as I promised Moses. We're going to come back to that. Verse 4. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites to the great sea toward the going down the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just, here it is, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous for you shall cause this people to inherit the land that I swore to their fathers to give to them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to the law that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn, turn from it from the right hand or the left, that you may be, have good success wherever you go. And uh, man, what what did what was the assignment? Uh, here, here's what the Lord said. Mo, uh, Joshua, uh, I know you've mourned. I know the leader's gone. Uh, but it's time to go forward. It's time to go on. It's time to experience something new that I have for you, and I'm going to be with you as you experience this new thing. And uh, yes, there's going to be challenges. There's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be difficulties. Uh, life is full of challenges, and life is full of difficulties, and life is hard. I've said it before, and we'll keep saying it. Life is hard. Living in this sin-cursed world and uh, is hard. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. However, uh, the Lord doesn't want them to be confused, and he doesn't want us to be confused over what just happened with the ending of Moses. It doesn't mean it's the end. It doesn't mean uh, there's nowhere to go from here. No, what the Lord wants them to, to see is, hey, I want you to keep going on in your journey. And, uh, and that's the message that when even though God brings the end of something uh, and takes us out of our comfortableness and takes us into change, the Lord is saying, I'm not done. I've got more. And uh, I want you to keep going, keep moving forward, keep growing uh, in your life. So how do we how do we do this? How do we keep going in the in the midst of these challenges and circumstances and even the enemies that they're going to face here and the enemy of this world is Satan? And, and his workings and all the things that we see in our culture and our news, uh, how do we keep going in the midst of all this change and all this new? Three things, and write them down uh, so you can review them this week. Number one, find your encouragement from the Lord's presence. Find your encouragement from the Lord's presence. Uh, yes, look back at verse five. Uh, he, uh, back at verse two, he tells us, uh, Joshua tells Joshua, yep, Moses is gone. 
Look at verse five. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Um, here's what the Lord is saying. I am still the same I am to Moses back in Exodus 3 when I revealed myself to him as the I am. He said to Joshua, Joshua, I am still the I am for you. And uh, uh, just as I was with Moses in Egypt, just as I was in Moses in the backside of the desert, just as I was with Moses in the 40 years of wandering and those challenges and those difficulties and in that hard, I will be the same Lord with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And uh, this is exactly what Jesus said to the disciples in Matthew 28 uh, when he was leaving this earth physically to go to heaven to be with the Father. Here's what he said in Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And, uh, and that is a promise that, uh, that we can hold on to, that in the midst of all this new and all the change and all the challenges and the new beginnings and the endings, here's the promise. We can find encouragement in that the Lord is with us from his presence. He's always there. <clears throat> I was talking to someone this week and, um, uh, and, uh, and, and that this, this very same thing came up was the fact that no matter what we're going through, the Lord will not forsake us. The Lord will not leave us. He is always there. And, and we, as we acknowledge that, uh, this may be the time that God begins to reveal himself and work in your life in a way that you experience him and your relationship in a way that you've not experienced him before. And uh, I don't know what you need today from his presence. I don't know what uh, is going on, that what endings God is, is bringing and what new beginnings uh, that God is bringing. But just be reminded in those times uh, of feeling like failure and feeling isolated and feeling uh, discouraged and feeling like, why is this changing and why is this ending and why is this new coming uh, into my life? Just find encouragement that the Lord is right there. He's not forsaken you. He's not forgotten you. Uh, he, he knows right where you're at. And his presence is there for us. Number two, find your encouragement from the Lord's presence. Secondly, find your strength and courage in the Lord. Find your strength and courage in the Lord. Uh, look back, if you would, at verse number six. He says, be strong. He, the Lord, remember, this is the Lord talking to I am is talking to Joshua be strong and courageous look at verse 7 only be strong and very courageous look down at verse number 9 have not I commanded you be strong and courageous do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go where is the Lord instructing Joshua to find courage and to find strength in himself, in his presence. We just found encouragement that the Lord is with us. And when we find encouragement of him being with us, it's that same Lord that gives us the courage and the strength to embrace what he's doing. And uh, the Lord's the one that's going to take them across the river uh, in just a, a chapter or two. It's the Lord that's going to deliver the new land into their hands as he promised to Moses, as he promised to his heritage. Um, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, this is a long, long, long promise that's been given uh, 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 to, to, to God's people. And God is saying to him, listen, Joshua, I know it's new. I know you've never, you have never had to lead like this before. You've never had to take 3 million plus people, 7 million people across a raging river. You never had to take them into battle uh, to fight for the land and eradicate uh, the, the heathen. I know you haven't done this before, but I want you to find strength and courage that you need in me. And, uh, that, uh, and, and it's, it's because of the Lord's presence in our lives continually that we can be strong, that we can find courage, that no matter what we have to face, no matter what is, as a church, we, we have to go through the change and do different and move the gospel forward and move into a mission with God. 
no matter what we have to cross that we've never crossed before, we've never faced before, we can find the courage and we can find the strength in the Lord to do that. The writer of Hebrews said it this way. He said in Hebrews 13, verse 5 and 6, For as he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, verse 6, Hebrews 13, 6, because the Lord says, I'll never leave you, forsake you. Verse 6, here's what it says. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do to me. There it is. Here he says, the Lord promised he'd never leave us or forsake us. And because of that promise, because of his presence, we can find strength and courage that the Lord will help us. Hey, listen, um, as I said earlier, change, change is hard. Um, endings are hard. New is hard. There are people in our church, there are people in my family that don't like new. And we just don't like new. And, uh, and maybe you don't like new. And uh, you, you like that same pair of, you know, shoes you've been wearing for 20 years because they're comfortable, they're broken in, and, and you know what to expect out of them. And, and uh, uh, you don't like new cars. You like that old car you've been driving around for years. And, and, uh, and because of all the technology and, and the things that come with the new cars. And listen, I understand uh, change is confusing. Change is challenging. Write it down. Change is challenging. But know this, that in the middle of God's bringing endings and God bringing new beginnings, the Lord is your helper. He will help you navigate. He will help you cross those rivers. He will help you in that new land that you've never been before and never experienced before. He will help you with those that enemy and those difficulties uh, that are in that new. And uh, our place is to follow. And if you keep reading in chapter two and three, uh, the instruction was that when you see the ark lifted up and they step in the river, follow, keep your eyes on the ark. And that's where we need to be, church. We don't need to be focused on looking at the changes. We don't need to be focusing our attention on the new things. We need to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord. Fixed on the Lord. Keep our eyes on Jesus. Because if we keep our eyes on Jesus, that is where we find encouragement. That is where we find strength. That is where we find courage to keep moving forward in our spiritual walk with him. Number three. So here he is. You ready? Find encouragement from the Lord's presence. Find your strength and courage in the Lord. And then thirdly, find your reassurance from the Lord's word. Find your reassurance from the Lord's word. Look back at uh, verse seven and eight. He says, only be very, only be strong and very courageous, being careful to do according to all the law. There's his word that Moses, my servant, commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. Verse eight, we know if you've been in church at all, you know this verse. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. <coughs> but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written therein. We find reassurance from the Lord's word. Um, there's no magic formula that the Lord is hiding from us. Um, he, gives, he gives it to Joshua right here at the very beginning, the very start. You know what I promised, Joshua. I've told Moses. I gave it to Moses. He gave it to you. He gave it to the leadership. He gave it to the people. And uh, you know it. He says, here's your job. There's nothing new. There's no magic formula. There's nothing I'm going to do different in the sense of, you know my word. You need to keep it. You need to do it. You need to follow it. You need to own it as your very life. And... Um, you know, I've been preaching God's word uh, since I was 15, 16 years old and uh, been in, in full-time occupational ministry uh, over 20-something years now. And, uh, and my desire in, in preaching God's word to people has been to bring the word, God's word to people, to, to, for them to learn 
God's word, to rest in God's word, to know God's word, to trust God's word, to do God's word, just like God is telling Joshua they need to do. And and my desire um, for you and my desire for the church and, and my desire for people are to be what the Bible calls a Berean type of follower of Jesus. Uh, in the book of Acts, there was a church started in a town called Berea. And here's what Paul said about that church than any other church. And uh, he said this in Acts 17, 11. Now, these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word, the word of God. They received it. They took it in with eagerness. They were wanting it. They were desired. They were eager to have it. Then here's what he said they did with it. Examining the scriptures daily to see if these things were so. And uh, listen, I don't want you to live off of my spirituality. I don't want you to live off of my sermons. And I don't want you to live off the truth that I'm bringing to you in a message here online or in person or in, in, a, in, a, in a discipleship class or on a Wednesday night or whenever. I, I don't want you your spiritual life to be dependent on what I say. I want you uh, to get into God's word. I want you to listen, obviously, respectfully to the preaching of God's word, no matter who it is. Uh, that we put in, in the in the in the on the platform at Calvary, but uh, but you have a responsibility. You have a spiritual responsibility to get into God's word yourself. Uh, you have a spiritual responsibility uh, to 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 study God's word and to see if what I'm saying to you and teaching you is what God's word says. Is that the truth? And if it is the truth, then you are to trust it, do it live by it, and follow the leadership uh, that God has placed uh, over so that it's just not about me. It's not about Joshua. It's not about Moses. It's about God's plan. Here's what God's plan was. God's plan was to move the nation into the promised land. It was set back with Abraham. When God promised Abraham, he would give him that land. And, uh, and it, that promise carried on through 400 years of slavery in Egypt. And God intended, <coughs> excuse me, God intended for Moses to lead the people over. And they refused. And they didn't trust the Lord. And they wandered for 40 years. And despite that wandering, it still didn't change the promise of God's word. God would do what he said he would do. And here, Moses is dead. There's been an ending. The new beginning a new leader, a new strategy, they're going to cross over the river. And here's what God said to Joshua. Joshua, it goes back to what I promised. It goes back to my word. You know it, you do it, you keep it. And here's the, the, here's the point, church, that we can find reassurance that no matter what new is coming, no matter what changes come about in our own personal lives, in our marriages, in our families, in our church, that we can go back to God's word and we can find reassurance in God's word that it's as we are all seeking the Lord together and we're seeking the truth to follow the truth. Remember what we talked about in Timothy, that the, that the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. As we as a body seek the truth to know it, to live by it, to do it, that God will do what he promised. God will fulfill his promise to us. You know, the Lord is the Lord has given you a gift, given me a gift. We're on the second Sunday of 2022. And a friend of mine posted on Facebook this morning, can we hit reset already <laughs> for 2020? He pastors in Ohio, and I'm sure he's probably online today. And, uh, you know, I kind of felt like that when I got up this morning and uh, was checking the weather, texting our leadership. And uh, I just can we just hit reset already? Two Sundays in, and we're online uh, instead of being in person. And, and just to be honest with you, that's discouraging to me. Uh, I haven't been to church since the 26th. Uh, we I missed that service because of being sick. So this is my third Sunday not being together with the church, and um, and it's just you know it's it's discouraging. And uh, and I'm thinking, okay, Lord. As I'm, I've studied this out and reviewed it, I'm thinking, okay, Lord, what endings are you bringing uh, in my life through this? 
what new so what new thing are you trying to to communicate to me uh, about church and about life and about really it reveals my own dispensability uh, that you know what this the church doesn't hinge on me and it doesn't hinge on my sermon being in public and uh, that's that's not what God's uh, depended on me for and uh, I'm thankful for that technology and I'm thankful for all that but um, you know it, it really reveals how dispensable we are and that we need to step back stop and step back and say lord what is the gift what is the gift that you're giving to me in this what is the gift today of ending the second sunday in january and new beginning that you're wanting to begin where does my focus need to be maybe it reveals to us where our focus has been maybe we're like the children of israel we've been so focused on the desert and just getting through the desert Maybe you feel like you're in a desert in your life right now and you're just striving to get through the desert. And that's kind of been where your eyes have been. Uh, maybe you're looking at the raging river in front of you thinking, man, life is so complicated and there's so much going on and, and I've been sick for so long or family members have been sick and this COVID world is, is uh, here we go again, right into the new year and more COVID stuff and that river is raging and you just don't know how you're going to get across it. And uh, there's fear, there's worry. Uh, there's concern and uh, and our eyes are fixed on that and uh, maybe we're fixed on the fact that we don't know what the enemy is doing across the river maybe they're waiting for us to get there and wipe us out and we lose everything maybe in 22 you fear of, you're in fear of losing your job or in fear of losing uh, your health or maybe in fear of losing a family member to sickness and there's a lot of fear because of what the enemy may be planning that you can't see and uh, and and Look, I want you to see this morning that God has given you a gift of an ending and a new beginning. And um, and so are you are you willing to embrace that? That's the sermon in a sentence. Are you willing to embrace the endings and the new beginnings that God wants to bring into your life, wants to bring into your church this year? And uh, the second thing I want you to think about is this. Um, are you willing? Are you willing to embrace what the Lord has for you. Are you willing to embrace it? And uh, remember, we go back to the very beginning. Change, change is hard. Change is confusing. Change is challenging. And uh, But just like we talked about last week, uh, sometimes you can't see growth until something dies first. And really, as I end today, isn't that the story of the gospel? Isn't that the story of Jesus? That new life, new eternal life could not come until there was an ending and something had to die. Jesus had to die on the cross and be put into the earth, just like that verse in Matthew. He had to be put into the earth and three days later, new life began and came out of that ground. And now because of an ending, the cross, Jesus down the cross for our sin, taking our place, that ending brought about a new beginning for anyone and everyone willing to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior. An ending, the death of Jesus, for a new beginning, a resurrection that brings life everlasting to all those who believe. And so this morning, I wonder, what is the ending's? That Jesus is bringing? What is the new beginnings that Jesus is bringing? And are you willing to embrace them? Are you willing to receive them? So here's my challenge today. Here's what I want you to do today or this week. Uh, if you're going to start the fast, great. If you're going to wait till next Monday, that's great. We'll talk about that on Sunday when we get back together uh, on the 16th. However, here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think this week, Lord, what ending are you bringing? And what new beginning, what new thing are you wanting me to chat to, to face? What new challenge are you wanting me to face? What new river are you wanting me to cross in my life this year? And maybe in your spiritual life, uh, maybe it's to read God's word consistently this year. And, uh, and we're going to be passing out uh, uh, devotionals for the times of fasting and prayer. We have those at the church already. If you want to stop in this week and grab one, stop by. But maybe it's getting into the word more consistently so that you can know it, live it, and do it. Um, maybe it's uh, the challenge of, of serving in a new position 
and maybe maybe up to this point you haven't served in, in any position at the church or any level uh, of of of, of uh, doing at the church at all and maybe need to jump in and, and try that challenge um, maybe it's maybe it's sharing the truth of the gospel with a family member maybe it's reconciling with a family member maybe it's forgiveness this year um, maybe it's accepting the limits that God has brought into your life you know we are limited we're, we're dispensable we're not God and we have limits I have limits I had to learn my limits and I'm still learning about more limits and, and sometimes embracing those limits are an ending to something, but also it can be a new beginning for something else. And so ask the Lord this week, Lord, what endings are you bringing uh, and what new beginnings do you want me to consider and to look at and to embrace for my life and for my church? And so pray for your church. Um, you know, uh, we're in 2022, second Sunday, and we still haven't been able to meet yet. And so I invite you. Uh, to do two things. I invite you, number one, to pray um, and uh, consider what the Lord wants you to fast from this year, uh, these 21 days, or doing two. We're doing two. You can do a 21-day fast or a 40-day. Uh, we got two options this year. Um, and then pray pray for uh, the leadership. Pray for the church. Um, pray for uh, you know what God wants to do in your life spiritually this year um, and uh, what new areas He wants you to explore. And um, and then secondly, um, you know, say, Lord, uh, where, where, where do I need to grow? Where do I need to grow? And uh, what area do I need to grow in uh, my trust, my courage, my strength uh, this year? And so, hey, it's great to connect with you today uh, online. I, I wish it was in person, and I'm looking forward to when we get back together. So the plan right now is for Awana to kick back off uh, on this Wednesday night. And uh, for us to be back on campus, uh, back in the facilities on Wednesday night, and uh, with our WANA, our youth group, and uh, uh, we'll have we're gonna be doing a prayer time on Wednesday night through our 21 days and 40 days of prayer on Wednesday night. So we're doing specific targeted praying. Um, so if you're an adult that comes to drop a child off, or or for a WANA or teens, or if you just want to come as an adult, we're just spend some time uh, praying together as a church family. And, uh, and then, uh, so that's the plan for this Wednesday. And then on the 16th, uh, pray, no snow, no ice, no nothing so we can get back together. Uh, but in the meantime, do this for me. Uh, reach out to somebody, uh, call, text, card, uh, just to be an encouragement to somebody this week and uh, let them know they're not forgotten. Uh, and I know we may not reach everyone, but let's try, let's do our best to do that uh, if you could and uh, be a blessing. Secondly, share the video after we're done. And uh, so they can be encouraged by the message today and invite. Uh, let's make 22 a year of inviting people uh, to church with us. Bring somebody with us. Let's think outside the walls this year and, uh, and invite one to come every week. And uh, who's your one going to be uh, that you're going to invite each week uh, this year? And, uh, and let's be an encouragement to others, a blessing to others as well. Hey, let me pray with you and uh, hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. And uh, as you stay in, stay safe, stay warm, and uh, look forward to gathering. Uh, let me just say this to you. I, I hate bringing this up before you go. We've, we've got quite a few people still on. Um, when we come together next week, and even if beforehand, uh, you know, even though we missed two Sundays, we still uh, have light bills to pay, the heating bill to pay, um, you know, our, our responsibilities as a business uh, with, um, you know, com light companies, gas companies. Uh, those types of things. And so would you uh, be sure to be faithful in your giving next Sunday when we come together? Or if you want to drop it off during the week uh, when Vicky's there, you can do that as well. And uh, listen, uh, the Lord has been good to our church. He's been good through your giving and your faithfulness and your generosity. And you do such a great job. Uh, and just because we may not be able to gather doesn't mean that's we take a week off from giving. And uh, I've got uh, ours in envelopes uh, ready to give. And, uh, and so I want to encourage you to do the same uh, so that we can be sure we're being good stewards of what the Lord trusted us with. Uh, you know, uh, we have a very large facility, very large property, and uh, there's a lot of financial responsibility in that. And uh, so I just want to encourage you to be faithful to the Lord as a good steward in doing that. And uh, in March, I want to tell you now, I'll give you kind of a sneak peek. In March, we are going to be having a stewardship conference 
and uh, and about our finances, how we relate to God with our finances. It's going to be a Sunday, a Monday, and a Tuesday, and uh, in March. And so I'll be talking more about that uh, on Sunday. And uh, there'll be free financial budgeting reviews for everyone in the church. You can sign up to meet with these specialists about your own budget, your own finances, your own future preparation, retirement, and things. And uh, so we've got a lot going on with that, and I'll talk more about that. But uh, let's be found faithful uh, to be good stewards in giving to the Lord. Hey, let me pray with you, and have a great afternoon. And I love you all, and uh, good to connect with you today. Father, thank you for our time in the Word. Thank you for the endings that you bring. And um, Lord, the challenge uh, of change is, is so hard, so difficult, and uh, we hate it. Uh, at so many levels, but yet it is necessary for growth to take place in our lives, for you to move us forward in that next step of growth. And so I pray for our ourselves individually in 2022 that we would take in those endings, that we would embrace them in the new beginnings you want to bring. And, uh, and Lord, I pray that you would help us as a church to do the same. I pray that you would uh, encourage us this year to see what new growth spiritually that you want us to experience as a as a church family, as an individual person uh, in our walk with you. Lord, I pray for the safety of our people. Watch over them. Many have been sick. We think of Tom and uh, uh, Jim Espenshade. We, we think of uh, our, our leaders that are still fighting.